So in this video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to download my LiDAR from the USGS site. Um, the tricky thing about this session is there are so many different resources for LiDAR. There's different websites. The USGS, which is an American-based government website, consolidates a lot of LiDAR for us uh, in the U.S., but it's not the end-all, be-all. You can also often find LiDAR at your state's uh, environmental resources site. You know, I know in Pennsylvania, uh, we have got an environmental resources site you can go to, but it's the same data that's in the USGS site. Um, well, let me show you here. If you go into the LiDAR sharing process, you know, and this is the section we're on, um, there's some information down here about LiDAR. There's a link here, which gives a lot of LiDAR sources around the world. Um, you just have to be aware that they're all different in how they work, okay? So finding LiDAR is a little bit tricky. You can always post some questions in the uh, Discord channel, the LiDAR train question and answer Discord channel. But I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. And the most common site that we use in the U.S. is the USGS, the national map. So I'm going to click on that. And it's going to take me to the USGS website. And initially, this map loads over here. And it's kind of crude. Right. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to change. I'm going to click on these little tiles up here and I'm going to change this to image only, which is going to give us a better like image, more like a ground in the United States. It's going to be easier to see things to me. Um, and then I'm going to in here, we're going to type in I'm going to type in Oakmont. Oops, I'm spelling that wrong. Oakmont Golf Club. And you can see that's the wrong one. You might need the actual address. And in this case, I can see that I think this is the one here. But if you have the address, if you look it up on Google what the real address is, let's try this one, see what happens. Um, that's the right one by chance. Okay, so here it is. I can mouse I'm using my scroll wheel to mouse uh, close in and out. Um, but the bottom line is here, I found that area. Now over here, I'm going to do something else, which is I am going to come over here and I'm going to come down to this section and do elevation source data right here. I'm going to click this box and down underneath here, I'm going to do select all and I'm going to do all file formats. OK, now what this is going to do is I'm going to the USGS site and a lot of sites allow you to do this is I'm going to highlight an area here. And it's going to tell me what LIDAR sources, what LIDAR tiles, okay, are available. So I'm going to come over here and click Extent. And then I'm going to back up a little bit here. And that's actually not what I want to do. I'm going to clear that geometry. I'm going to back up a little bit more and move this. And we have to decide at this point how much LIDAR data we want to capture. And this is where things get a little bit tricky. OK, we're going to be capturing two different areas, per se. One area is what we call our inner terrain. And that inner terrain area is any place a ball could potentially land. OK, so you can see if I'm talking about this area around our course, most likely and I'm going to go over here and click extent and I'm going to drag. And it has to be, it eventually has to be a square area. Later on, it's important for this to be square. Right now, it's not important for this to be square, but I'm going to click a square area. This is what I would deem safe for an inner terrain around this golf course because it's just outside, okay, the fairways and the areas of this course. And there's a good chance, oh, there's a really, any place in this area a, a ball lands. The ball is not going to land any place out here. No one's going to hit it this far. So this is what I would consider safe for my inner terrain area. However, what we're looking for is our inner and outer terrain area here. So I'm going to clear geometry. And for now, I'm going to extend outside, pretty far outside of this. And this is just an approximation. I'm going to highlight this area. And this is what I would consider including my inner and outer. So it contains my golf course, but then the area outside here. The reason we capture this area outside here is we'll be using this for more like what the golfer sees. Okay. Now, an outer is not necessary. We do not have to gather an outer. You could just do an inner. 
but I would suggest you do it anyway. You can always not use it inside your course. Limitations, okay? Inside of Unity, later on, our Unity editor will only draw things up to five kilometers away. So you're going to have to determine on your course, okay, what here is five kilometers away. You could look at Google Maps. <clears throat> you can make some measurements there. But just keep in mind that if a golfer is standing right here, okay, where my mouse is, the farthest they're going to be able to see away in Unity is five kilometers. So if you have a mountain over here that's really prominent on your course, if it is farther than five kilometers away, it does you no good to capture it inside with your LiDAR data. Okay, that's the best advice I can give you because I don't know what the surrounding area in your course is like. Now, if you have mountains, there are ways in Unity you can drop prefabs in. It's not covered in this video. I, I don't even think I cover it in my other videos. It's more of an advanced topic. But just be aware when you're looking for your LiDAR data, I would say you're looking at a five kilometer radius around it. So that's my advice. Now, we have our area highlighted here. Now what I can do, well, let me just show, let me draw another one. So I clear geometry, I go over here to extent, and I'm going to say for my course, as far as my outer goes, it would be right around here. And I'm going to center that right on my golf course. I'm going to make it as square as I can, just an approximation. Now I could come over here and I could do search products. What that search products is going to do is it's going to list all the tiles. Okay. And you can see when I hover over this, it lists all the tiles that cover that area. And if I look in here, I can see that this looks like these tiles were published in 2014, but it, they were published in 2014. But looking at this metadata here, it looks like they were taken in 2006, 2008. So they're a little bit older. Okay. Now you can see, I've got a lot of results here. Now I do know Pennsylvania has a lot of LIDAR coverage. I'm very fortunate. I live in Pennsylvania. If it comes in empty for you guys, you might have to look someplace else for your LiDAR. But you can see there's 69 results. Now, if I scroll down here a little further, you can see this is all 2006. Now I get down here this other, which is 2020. And this format is still LAS as well. So that is the format here. So far, I'm only seeing LAS. I have seen no DEM files, which is uh, another model. So you can see these files, though, if I click on these, they're newer, which is good but they're a little bit older, okay? I'm sorry, they're newer, but they're a little bit smaller. That's fine, most likely these are better LiDAR. I always look for the newest stuff, and I also try to find, let me keep on scrolling down through here. Man, there's a lot of coverage in this area. There's LAS files, LAS files. I'm gonna keep on, oh, now I have a GeoTIFF. So GeoTIFF is a form of digital elevation model. Those are also from 220, so all right, so this would be my first choice at this point because they're new and they're GeoTIFF, which is a little bit easier to work with. It shortens the process up, okay? So I got GeoTIFF, 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 and it looks like to me, I'm going to go to page two here. Yeah, so it looks like these are all GeoTIFF. I'm going to have to download all these tiles, okay, the GeoTIFF tiles. So which ones are those? Well... I'm going to come here and I'm going to select, let me see, can I do select all? No, it doesn't look like I can. Er, so to cover this entire area, I'm going to click the carp. And what that's going to do is it's going to put that tile in my cart, like a shopping cart, like I'm shopping online. So I'm going to select all those. And what you're going to do is you're going to download the tiles that are appropriate for your course, which are the newest ones would be my first choice, the newest tiles. And then if you have a choice between GeoTIFF or DEM files, get those. My last choice would be LAS files. Now, the other thing that you want to check while you're doing this, and this is where things get tough, is you want to check the resolution of this LiDAR. Now, I know that this stuff's pretty new, and I've looked at this, these things before, but I do know that this is like one meter resolution, which is really is decent. But you really want at least one meter resolution. And I talk about that in the, in the theory, 
but that is essentially how well detailed the LiDAR data is. So I've got all my GeoTIFFs highlighted. Now there are various different ways to actually download this data. For me, what I'd like to do is I come up here to my cart and then I highlight this text file right here. I can highlight, I click on it. And you can see when I did that, it downloads to a folder for me. So let's take a look at this. So this data 16 text file gets downloaded. I'm gonna open that. And you can see in here that it's just a bunch of links, HTTP links <coughs> to different data. And this data happens to be hosted on Amazon, okay? So I'm going to close that because there is a program called UGET. And they um, actually, I think, yeah, they give you instructions in here. I'm not going to go into detail. But if you go into UGET here, it's going to give you instructions on UGET. UGET is a program. It's available for free. And I already have it downloaded. Just follow their instructions. So I'm going to type in UGET here. And I need to know that where my UGET is installed. I can go here and click on my uget.exe folder or my executable. This opens up the uget program. And I'm sorry, I already downloaded some stuff. You won't see these in here, but I can clear these out. Now that I've uget opened, I can do this slick thing. I go file, batch download, text file. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find that text file that I just downloaded. And you can see I got a bunch of these in here because I've downloaded a lot of stuff already. Uh, let me see, my debt is going to be, I did it in the downloads. Here it is. Here's the one that I just downloaded today. I'm going to double click on that. And I'm going to say, okay. And now what it's doing is it's going out to those Amazon links inside that text file. And it's downloading all of these for me. Now, where it downloads is dependent on how you have, <laughs> you get set up for you. I think if I look at this, Download, edit, settings. There's a place in here while these are downloading. Let's see if I can find this. I'm going to pause while I try to. So where this gets downloaded is over here into, you go to category, properties, default for new download. And this is where your downloads will get uh, downloaded to. I have it in my downloads folder under a folder called LiDAR. And I can just show you guys this. I go to here to my downloads folder. Here's LiDAR. And you can see that all these are getting put inside of here. Okay, So this is where all my LiDAR data is going to end up. Um, that's it. So after this, you've got your LiDAR downloaded. Um, oh, the only thing I would recommend is after it's downloaded, so my stuff is being downloaded into downloads LiDAR, I'm going to take all these files that get downloaded, so to highlight them all, and I'm going to put them in my project folder. So I'm going to come here to my projects, Oakmont, Oakmont LiDAR, Oakmont. And remember, there's this LiDAR folder here. I'm going to put these ones I downloaded are GeoTIFF or DEM files. So I'm going to put them here. If you downloaded LAS files, put them under the LAS folder. Okay. On to the next video.